Hi, Dr. Brian Heberlin here with Lexington ENT and Allergy, and I want to talk about two different kinds of allergy testing that can be done. There are skin tests and there are blood tests, and they're both looking at different things and they both have their advantages and their disadvantages. The most common way allergy testing is done is by a skin test. In our practice, we use a two-stage test. We start with an initial what's called a prick test where there's a small amount of the thing that you're allergic to that's just barely placed through these little plastic prongs barely underneath the skin surface. And then we wait and watch and see how much of a reaction the person has to that, uh, to that antigen that's called. And then we apply a second stage of the test called an intradermal test where we put a small shot of the material barely under the surface and we make a little small blister and then we see how much that blister expands over the next 20 minutes. If someone's allergic to the item, it will expand because of the swelling and inflammation that's created by the histamine release. If they're not allergic to it, it won't really expand. And so we can kind of tell what they're allergic to and how badly they're allergic to the items through those combination of the prick and the intradermal test. That's got a fancy name called modified quantitative testing. And so that is the most comfortable type of testing um, of the most comfortable type of skin testing that can be done because it involves the least, least amount of needles and you get good accurate results that can go straight to allergy vial preparation if someone were to need allergy shots. The other type of testing that can be done is a blood test or an in vitro test. And so what that means is a small amount of your blood is drawn it's sent to a lab and they look for a chemical that our body makes called IgE or immunoglobulin E. Our body makes immunoglobulins to fight infections but it sometimes inadvertently makes immunoglobulins that attack things that really shouldn't bother us and that's really what an allergy is and so your body may make an immunoglobulin E that's directed towards ragweed and so there are lab tests that can measure that amount of IgE you make if you're not allergic to ragweed, you really shouldn't have much of that in your blood. And if you're very allergic to ragweed, you're going to have a lot of it in your blood. That is a challenging blood test because our body, even if we're very allergic, only makes a really, really tiny amount because it makes a big effect, although it's only a small amount. So there's got to be a lot of fancy lab techniques that are involved in doing that. Sometimes it'll be referred to as RAST testing. That's one technique of doing it, but um, it's really just an in vitro blood testing. And so the blood tests tell you about the allergies and that can be used sometimes for vial preparation, although we typically think it's a little less safe, safe to go off the blood test than skin testing um, because it's not maybe quite as accurate or as sensitive as a test. Skin testing will usually find more things that someone's allergic to, so we think of it being a little more sensitive. Um, and then blood testing, um, when it's positive for things, you really feel confident that it's positive, uh, but sometimes it can miss some allergens. In our practice, we don't blood test or we don't skin test people that are taking a medication called beta blockers. Now, beta blockers are commonly used for both heart rate and blood pressure, and they're a great medication, but they do make allergy testing slightly more risky. Uh, there are some places that can test people by skin. Uh, on beta blockers. It's just as a slightly elevated risk and at our practice we're not doing that. The, um, in, in that instance we often will use blood tests to figure out allergens in somebody that's on a beta blocker if that medication can't be stopped. Um, anyway, that's a broad overview and maybe more information than you really want to know about the two different types of testing. Um, the blood test is nice because it's a simple blood draw, um, you know, so there's no risk involved really in that. And the skin testing, though, finds more things and is a better, more direct route towards immunotherapy uh, in people that need it. Usually, skin testing is a, a moderate, a bit cheaper than the blood test. Um, the blood test has to be sent off to specialized labs, and so because of all the fancy techniques that they need, it is a rather expensive test. Um, that's for inhalant allergens, um, like pollen and dust and mold and pet dander. For foods, um, sometimes with flip-flop things, and I prefer blood testing over skin testing for foods, although you can do both uh, for food allergies as well. Uh, I think food allergy testing, whatever route you use, is not quite as good as the testing for the inhalant allergens. 
Um, I know that's a lot, uh, but that's just a broad overview of the two types of testing, both skin testing and blood testing that can be done and the advantages and disadvantages of both. Thank you.